Hey guys, Nintendrew here. Today, I'll be reviewing the Evercade EXP handheld system from Blaze Entertainment. All right, here it is, the Evercade EXP. This is the latest handheld games console from Blaze Entertainment. For those uninitiated viewers, the Evercade family of systems are new retro consoles that make use of a growing library of licensed titles in a proprietary cartridge format. That library includes everything from classic arcade and home console hits to new indie darlings and compilation packs, and just like the Evercade Versus home console before it, the Evercade EXP is 100% compatible with all previous software releases. That means if you've already invested in the Evercade ecosystem, you don't need to go out and start a whole new library of games if you choose to make the upgrade to the EXP. Now, a couple years ago, I had the opportunity to review the original Evercade handheld. In starting this review for the EXP, I'd like to revisit a clip from that initial review. Overall, the Evercade shows a ton of potential, but is slightly held back by a few weak points that I really wish could have been addressed ahead of production. A USB-C charging port, a more convenient TV docking solution, and a cleaner portable image would have really pushed this system over the top for me. As far as I know, I haven't heard anything about a new version, but hopefully we'll see a 2.0 release with some of those hardware tweaks eventually. So, like I said, my main three issues with the original Evercade were the lack of a USB-C charging port, a hard reset when connecting to the television, and a slightly blurry and awkwardly scaled handheld display. Well, I'm happy to say that the Evercade EXP has delivered on fixing two of those three issues. Now instead of the aging micro USB connector, we have a proper USB-C charging port. And there's also now an option in the suspend menu to display games at a more crisp native resolution. Unfortunately, the system does still kick you back out to the main menu when connecting to the TV over mini HDMI, but that's a fairly minor gripe. From a hardware perspective, the Evercade EXP is technically better than the original in almost every way. The screen has overall improved in clarity with a higher 480p resolution as opposed to the original's 272 vertical pixels. It also features built-in Wi-Fi for software updates, a vertical or Tate mode for portrait layout arcade games with dedicated buttons, and a proper pair of triggers and shoulder buttons, whereas the original had just the latter. On the software side, you've got some new built-in scanline filters that can be modified on the fly, plus a free monthly spotlight game to download and play at no extra cost. However, these upgrades do come at a significant cost compared to the original. While the original Evercade handheld launched at a more reasonable 80 US dollars, the EXP will set you back almost twice that amount with an MSRP of 150 bucks. Now, to be fair, this higher price point may be accounted for with the extra content. This latest entry in the Evercade family does come preloaded with a wealth of content from Capcom already installed, plus six classic arcade titles on the included iRim Volume 1 cartridge. There's also a small selection of hidden games, which I'll avoid spoiling for you here, but there are other videos on YouTube about those games if you'd like to seek them out. It's worth noting as well that these Capcom titles are exclusive to the Evercade EXP. You cannot purchase them for the original Evercade or Versus systems. Personally, that does seem like an odd choice to me given that the whole idea behind the Evercade lineup is cartridge-based nostalgia, but still, that Capcom collection is a major incentive nonetheless, especially with games like Mega Man X which are prohibitively expensive to play on the original hardware today. One thing I do want to point out here is, although the developers did introduce that pixel-perfect display mode that presumably renders games at a whole number multiple of its native vertical resolution, those titles are still displayed at a 4x3 aspect ratio, which means you're not getting those true square pixels that many of us who might have played these games on an emulator are more familiar with. The picture is still scaled horizontally to approximate what it would have looked like on a CRT TV. I find this kind of odd. Playing NES or Super Nintendo games with Nintendo Switch Online, for example, does give you the option for playing with square pixels, which they refer to as their own pixel-perfect mode. But the good news here is because the Evercade EXP has built-in Wi-Fi and upgradable firmware, it's entirely possible we might see that functionality added with a system update down the road. Speaking of upgrades, I came across another interesting tidbit while researching for this review. Apparently, you can update the original Evercade to use this newer user interface that is implemented by the EXP. So even if you don't have the newest hardware, you can still enjoy many of the benefits it offers, such as expanded metadata and scanline filters. I'll have a link in the description for that firmware update if you'd like to try it for yourself at home. But even with that considered, there are still some definite reasons to prefer the EXP over the original. For one, the Evercade feels a little bit more toy-like in quality and form factor, whereas the EXP is closer to a true device, like a smartphone or tablet, with a more sturdy shell and a pretty decent weight to it. 
Plus, to be frank, uh, the original Evercade is no longer quite so easy to get your hands on. Very few of the retailers listed on the Evercade website seem to be carrying the debut handheld anymore, so it appears that they're going full steam ahead with the EXP as the new replacement model for the Evercade line, which makes sense. Now with that being said, at least in my mind, the magic of the Evercade lineup is not in the hardware itself, but rather in the games. These custom cartridges with beautifully illustrated full-color manuals and new releases still launching at just $20 a pop. Included in this library is the Indie Heroes 2 compilation, which features Yeah Yeah Beavis 2, a game by fellow YouTuber and friend of the channel John Riggs. This is super cool to see, and I love that the Evercade library has continued to grow with licensed classic titles and new indie projects alike. So, here's my final verdict. If the Evercade EXP had launched at the same $80 price point as the original, I would have no trouble recommending it. But as it stands, I'm not sure it necessarily offers enough improvements to be considered worth that extra $70. If you're interested in joining the Evercade ecosystem for the first time and have yet to make that plunge, the EXP absolutely offers the definitive Evercade experience. But otherwise, the original is still great to play today, especially given that firmware update that lets you enjoy some of those new features. Now, I gave the original an 8 out of 10, and although this model has improved upon almost all my gripes with the first system, it also comes with that more hefty price tag, almost double. So with all these points considered, I'm also giving the Evercade EXP an 8 out of 10. All right, guys, that's going to do it for my review of the Evercade EXP. But what did you think? Will you be picking up this system, or are there certain things that you'd like to see them improve upon for another iteration? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing to Nintendo for all sorts of cool gaming content, and make sure to share it with any friends who might find it interesting. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye!